We're about an hour from Colombo, north of it, um, in an area called Nigambo. And this is a tourist resort area. Uh, but having all those nice hotels, this is still a working fish market. Indian Ocean, fish market, they catch and they sell. The transition time from ocean to the uh, fish market is about 100 yards. Drop the beat, man. <laughs> and lagoon crab and the bit small for us to use but in the market you can only find small ones but it's alive and uh, it's tied up so that you don't get injured it's not a uh, ocean uh, crab so meat tastes different and at the same time ocean uh, marine crabs I find when I cook them they're very salty because they are in salt water so this with this one you can cook it differently It has color pigments. You can see it actually changing color. It shows it's alive. These are freshwater giant shrimp. Uh, we use a lot of these at the restaurants. These guys have really, really, really. Um, deep flavors and it wasn't very popular in hotels and restaurants because the head's bigger than the tail but it's an amazing flavor and we come to restaurants for not for quantity for the taste right so we use only this at my restaurants Barracuda. just a man Hi and welcome to the Colombo Sports Racecourse Complex. My name is Dilshan. Well, basically this used to be a harness racing uh, course uh, where you got a lot of horses running around. And then after that, in 2012, um, they redeveloped this into the first uh, international rugby ground. And it's pretty cool because all the home matches happen here. And I know that Sri Lanka, you know, they don't make it really big in the rugby scene around the world, but we take rugby very seriously here. So this is a big deal to everyone here in Colombo, and especially uh, when it comes to the school arena, a big deal. Plus, some of the rugby are really good to look at. That's just that on too. my. That's just on my end. So yeah, it, it is one of the very celebrated sports. So that's why this place is really important. It was a building that no one really looked at some time ago, but I guess it's a place that a lot of people appreciate now. So this has to be one of my favorite spots here in Colombo. It is the Sky Lounge here at Kingsbury Hotel and it is just spectacular, a nice place to kick back, relax, forget everything. You know what your wife said, what will happen at work and just enjoy the view. You know, sometimes people might complain that Colombo might not have a lot going on or it's not maybe as great as most of the other countries you've seen. But once when you do get above 10 levels of Kingsbury Hotel, when you sit in a place like this, 
you get to see the twin, tw uh, the twin towers of Colombo, you get to see most of the hotels. There's the golf face screen over there where all the kids and families, they come and play and they have all those better fried prawns and stuff while they fly their kites. There's the old parliament there. You see all the nicely constructed roads in the city of Colombo. So you prove everyone else wrong if they ever said anything bad. I, together with the best figure of Sri Lanka, have ever produced Mahela and Kumar. We own this restaurant together. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey producing the best possible crab dishes from Sri Lankan crab. So this is our Sri Lankan mud crab, made famous and popular by Singapore in Singapore chili crab. But we need to create some institution to bring the crab back and uh, give it a place in Sri Lanka. So that's why I chose the name Ministry of Crab. And apart from crab, we also serve freshwater prawns. Uh, this restaurant has zero importing ingredients, except for olive oil and wine. Everything here is from Sri Lanka. We cook all our crabs in woks, except the curries, which comes in clay pots. So it gets cleaned at the back, and they come out here, and cooking styles are here, and we cook it a la minute. Every crab from being in a cage to the plate is about 12 to 14 minutes. Olive oil, garlic, chili flakes, crab, and a dash of soy sauce. Uh, the simplicity of this is amazing, but the flavors you get is, are very deep. And I've, we've seen many guests from Singapore buy this from us and take it back to their own country. This is the old town hall, and seated around this table are the old uh, municipal councillors. This is a kind of cool, if somewhat creepy place. We just wandered into this building once we looked through the keyhole, but I think they're starting to like make it more available to tourists. It's not, uh, I guess it's not a conventional tourist site, but it's kind of unintentionally awesome. This building is beautiful. I mean, it's and things around it, it sprung up like a modern commercial district, which is like Chennai, India or something. But this remains like a very old building. You can kind of see how uh, Colombo was back then. They haven't preserved it, but they also haven't changed anything. So it remains just a wonderful uh, architectural uh, site. This is Barefoot, it's like an oasis in the middle of the city. It's, there's a shop, there's an art gallery, there's a cafe. Um, if you're in town, you can just come here, you can meet people, you can listen to music, you can hang out. It's a cool spot. So this is the Barefoot Gallery. The Colombo art scene is growing a lot. Uh, Saskia Fernando just opened the first dedicated gallery, which is pretty cool. And they're having the Biennale right now. I think we have some cool stuff. There's some excellent sculpture and some excellent uh, young people coming up. But it's at a stage of uh, growth right now. These are the famous barefoot sarongs. Sarongs, if you're unfamiliar, are pretty awesome. It's like wearing a towel all day, but people are socially cool with that. Slave Island. It's also called Colombo 2. It was called Slave Island because the Portuguese actually kept slaves here. And uh, later Malay people settled here and they still live here. That's Malay Street back there. Most people in Colombo, we live in really the suburbs. So this is like an urban town. Like if, as you can see on your right, these are buildings with like two levels. It's, you can walk on the street, you can see stuff. Like it's, it's fun like that. But there's also like really good dodgy bars around here. And then at, late at night they serve uh, burgers up there. So everybody passes through here, but it, nobody's really like stopped here. This is the Castle Hotel, it's like the finest dodgy bar in town. It used to be a real hotel, I mean you can still get rooms here, but it's just really good for cheap drinks and really good service and a beautiful, beautiful building.
Cheshire Beach, which is my local, it's like my pub. It is, as you can see, the most amazing place. Indian Ocean, clear waters. And, but the, ma the main reason that I love this is that my friends. Uh, I can come here of an evening, there'll always be someone here that I know, and if not, there's always people to meet. Fort, which is a UNESCO site and within the 130 acres are some of my favorite shops and this is one of them. So this is Laksana, my favorite jewelry shop. I mean how are you? No, I'm very well. There is tourmaline which is surrounded with the white sapphire. Yeah. It's set with the yellow gold. Yeah. Uh, that's also uh, designed by me. It's innovative and it's a one-off, so you're not going to find it anywhere else. And it's just fun coming in here and saying, okay, I mean, I want, you know, a bit of that ring, a bit of that ring, a bit of this. I've seen something in a magazine, and he puts it together and draws it, um, and and then we play like this. And I mean, just look at that. I mean, isn't that fun? That's all sapphires. I mean, I, I would just like to put glue on a piece of board and have all those stuck on it. I mean, how cool is that? This is Mimi Mango, which is my favourite place to shop. Hello, sweetheart. This is Joe Eden, Hi. who has designed the shop, the clothes, everything in it. And every time I come in here, I want to shop. Shop! <laughs> um, and as you can see, it, it can go from something absolutely delicious like one of these, that um, it makes fabulous presents, to to my precious, precious. Let me show you these. One I've been producing for the last five or six years now is this dress, which is, uh, oh, is my the favorite. genius dress, which we call the Uma dress. Named after Uma Thurman because I always think she'd look fabulous in it. Yeah. Um, and just churn that out in lots of different colours every season. where my journey in Sri Lanka started actually. Um, I did the spa here, so I was here for a long time and grew to love the place and how can you not love the afternoon tea? It's just a magical place and I love it. I love everything about it, so tea time. Mirsa is way down south of the country and this part of the area is where whales act, in fact migrate from one wherever they live to another place and Mirsa happens to be spot on it. Uh, it has become more and more popular over the last half a dozen years. Um, it is now a business for a lot of tourists who come. This is a must-see adventure uh, and today we will see a lot of whales and maybe 
some dolphins en route and God knows what else. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye out and see what we can see. Whale watching, like I said, has become a, a business uh, for a lot of folks. The Navy has chartered boats that come out for folks to uh, come and watch it, but they take an awful lot of people together at once. Coming on a private boat is much, much better. Smaller groups, uh, you pick your time as to when you want to leave and you want to come. It costs a little bit more, but it's well worth it because you actually see a lot of whales. You would, for me, that's the only way to do it. The color change in the water. Look, look ahead. Way ahead. You can see a light blue. He's coming up. It's just unbelievable. It's uh, because it's this huge mountain coming towards you, and it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Uh, it's a novelty here because uh, when we had a civil war, uh, and, you know, so people are not allowed to venture out, and only the fisher folk actually got to see the whales. Now, normal people, tourists, people who come here actually uh, uh, come out and see for themselves the, the wildlife uh, that is, uh, you know, in and around Sri Lanka. So it's, it's amazing. It's nothing like, you know, uh, you've ever seen. The hardest part is the first time when you see it, uh, you, you realize how insignificantly small you are compared to this uh, sea creature. Normally, after whale washing, we are famished, and the first thing we, you know, look for is uh, somewhere good to eat. And being in an island, obviously, we, you know, we like, we love our seafood. And this is one place because this is an area during the weekends we normally hang out. And this is a place that does extraordinary choice of seafood. Well, these oysters are absolutely beautiful. We get these in our lakes and they're available, but the people in Sri Lanka don't eat them. So, more for us, more for the people who love them. They're absolutely delicious. Well, the ocean oysters are uh, a small and consistent in taste, whereas the, uh, the ones that we get from the lake are, as you can see, varying in size and varying in texture uh, and also varying in taste, and they're absolutely awesome. And you need to try it to actually see the difference and feel the difference. Mm. Absolutely awesome. We are in the heart of Silonte country in the center at an altitude of around 4,000 and 4,500 feet. People come to Ceylon for tea. If it's an industry that's known the world over, when you say Ceylon, people say tea. And what this Ceylon Tea Trails is about is we've converted four traditional 100-year-old tea estate managers bungalows into luxury lodges and you've got four bungalows between 2 and 15 kilometers apart. We call it tea trails because guests can walk or bike from one to the other, have a meal in one or stay in a different bungalow every night in the most pristine stunning scenery of you know emerald emerald fields of Ceylon tea.
We are now on a Dilma High Point estate called Dunkeld. It is at an elevation about 4,000 to 4,300 feet. And it, particularly at this time, the dry weather season, it produces some of the finest teas that Ceylon is known for. Some of these bushes are as much as 50 years old and the flush that is produced, the two leaves and the bud, that is what these pickers are, are picking, which can never be replicated by a machine. And the tea that they pick here, an average plucker would pick 80 to 20 kilos. And we only pluck two leaves and a bud, as you can see here, where the flavor is concentrated and loaded with antioxidants. And we manufacture speedily by tomorrow morning, this tea can be on some of our packages. We have now reached the last chapter in the story of tea. Ceylon, a small country, a tea, a single plant, can produce a variety of tastes in strength, character, and flavors, just like wine.